We're gonna graph some linear functions today using the table method. It's very exciting. How can you tell if an equation is linear? Well, it's gonna be x to the first power. That's the big clue. The equation contains only one or two variables, all right? And if the ordered pairs are graphed, they form a straight line. A blank to an equation is an ordered pair that makes the equation true. So a solution, oh, <laughs> oh my goodness, what are we going to do here? A solution, and look, a coordinate is x, then y. That makes the equation true. How many solutions are there to a linear equation? Great question. Well, if it's like y equals something, x plus something, infinite. Right? That's what we're going to figure out. So we're going to check if negative 1, 3 is a solution to 4x minus y equals 1. Does it make it true? Now negative 1 is the x. So whenever we see an x, we're going to substitute in negative 1. And then minus y is 3. So we're checking if this equals 1. Well, 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. Negative 4 minus 3 is negative 7, which is not 1. So no, that is not a solution here. I'm going to guess this one is, but hey, who knows? Give it a try. Go ahead and pause it if you'd like, and then check back in. So 4x minus y equals 1. 4 times 1 is 4 minus 3. 1 does equal 1. Yes! Cool! Alright! Now we're going to graph. Find three ordered pair solutions to the linear equation. Plot the three points and draw a straight line. If they don't connect, you made a mistake. Alright, finding the solutions, here's the way I find it's easiest. So I like to create a bit of a table. Now I, I can do it in that space there, but I have the space here. So I have like an x column, and then here's like where I do my work. So y equals x plus 1, and then this would be like the y, or you could do the full coordinate here. So let's say I pick to put in negative 3 for x. Let's see what we get. Well, y equals x, negative 3. We just chose that plus 1. Negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2. So when we put in negative 3 for x, the answer we got was negative 2. So that could be our coordinate. So go ahead and plot the point negative 3, negative 2, which is 3 to the left, down 2. There's 1. We've got to do that two more times. I like to use 0. And by the way, you could pick any numbers. I just like to pick one that's negative, I like to pick zero, and then I like to pick a positive one, just so they're spread out a little bit. So if we pick zero, y equals x, which is zero, plus one. Zero plus one is just one. So we chose zero, that would be our x coordinate. Our answer was one, so we plot zero, one. And then we're gonna choose one other number. I'm gonna pick a positive number. Let's say I pick five y equals x plus 1. So y equals 5 plus 1, which is 6. So our x was 5. We chose that. We solved it. We got 6. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Look at that. They form a nice straight line, too. You can use a ruler. You can use the edge of a book. Calculator case. All that stuff. Make a nice straight line. Cool, that is one method that you can graph it, and that's how we're gonna graph them today. So let's try another one. Negative two x plus y equals negative four. So again, I'm gonna create three uh, columns here. I'll have my x, we'll have our coordinate on the right side here, and then negative two x plus y equals negative four. So, let's pick a negative number. Again, we don't need to, but it's nice to have negative, maybe a zero, and then a positive. Let's say I pick negative four for x. 
which that's going to be the x coordinate. And then whatever answer we get will be the y coordinate. So let's see, negative 2x, negative 2 times negative 4, plus y equals negative 4. Negative 2 times negative 4 is 8, plus y equals negative 4. We could go ahead and subtract 8 from both sides, and that would give us y equals negative 12. So we'll have a point at negative 4, negative 12. That'd be to left 4, down 12. You know what? Let's go ahead and scale it by 2's, because that's going to fall off my graph. So let's say this is like negative 2, negative 4, negative 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. So here would be my point, negative 4, negative 12. Again, I just changed the scale. I went by 2's instead. Now I'm going to try 0, because 0 is pretty easy to work with. I'm putting this in for x. Negative 2 times 0 plus y equals negative 4. Negative 2 times 0 is 0. It's just going to go away. So we're just left with y equals negative 4. So we'll have a point at 0, negative 4. Again, we're going by 2's here. So 0, negative 2, negative 4. And then I'm going to pick another one. And since I'm going by 2's, I'm going to pick an even number. Let's say I pick positive 4. Negative 2 times 4 plus y equals negative 4. Negative 2 times 4 is negative 8. You get rid of negative 8 by adding 8 to both sides, which gives us y equals positive 4. So we put in 4 for x, and we got out 4 for y. 2, 4, 2, 4. Now you don't always need to label them like that. I just wanted to remember we were going by twos with our scale here. And those form a nice straight line. I believe, if I remember correctly, oh yeah, you got one to try. So go ahead, pick some numbers for x, try it out, pause it, check back in, see if your line looks the same. Now you might choose different numbers than me, but our graphs should still look the same. So I'm going to choose negative 2. y equals 3 times negative 2 minus 2. That would be negative 6 minus 2, which is negative 8. So we have negative 2, negative 8. Negative 2, negative 8, right there. All right. Next one, I'm going to pick 0 because it's easy to work with. That would be 0 minus 2, which is just negative 2. So 0, negative 2, that would be our next point. And then, let's say I pick 3. Whoa! y equals 3 times 3 minus 2. 3 times 3 is 9, minus 2 is 7. 3, 7. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And then, nice, forms a straight line. Cool. All right, now we're going to talk about maybe some weird scenarios that might show up. <sighs> Skip this. Here's the deal. If it is x equals some number, it's just going to be a vertical line at that number. So this says x equals negative 3. That's just going to be a vertical line at negative 3. That's it. Now, if you look at any coordinate on this line, like here is negative 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Here is negative 3, 0. Here's negative 3, negative 2. Any coordinate on this line, the x's will equal negative 3. So x equals is a vertical line at that number. If it's y equals, it's just a flat line at that number because any coordinate on this line, 1, 2, 3, 4, any coordinate on that line would have a y that equals 4. x equals vertical. y equals horizontal. 
which seems backwards, right? Because the Y is your vertical axis. Whoa, the X is your horizontal axis. But it's where it crosses those axes. I think that might be it. That's it, man. We did it. We graphed with the table method.